everyone, welcome back to Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, big day has come, all the testing of the car, all the putting of the parts on is, is done, all the installation. Um, seen the car running one of the previous videos. It's um, time to strip it down. So, um, this video I'll probably just um, put something up, this short intro at the start. I'll, um, I'll then do some just screenshots of progress of the car being stripped down goal is to get it all stripped, parts into boxes, got a big pile of boxes here, plus a pile of them over the back there, anything I've purchased that was new, I still have the boxes for them. I'll get all those bits into the boxes and label them and store it away. And then I'll um, I'll get the car onto the rotisserie, I've got the rotisserie sitting over the side there. I hope so, we just have the back, back part of the coupe on the rotisserie. So, um, hope you enjoy the little video um, and the slideshow that I put together for this. And we'll get stuck into it. Um, I guess the only other thing would be if you haven't liked or subscribed to the channel already just um, do that all those likes help um, the subscription kind of tells me that um, people are interested in what I'm doing um, it's not unlike any other HQ it's a like I mentioned before it's a matching number HQ GDS numbers correct engine to the plates um, get the original gearbox and the original um, diff in the car as well still got the stock wheels full stock interior it's just been sandblasted and uh, painted in primer, so um, yeah, without any further delay, so I'll, I'll get stuck into it. Enjoy the video.
as you can see it's pretty much mostly disassembled now have the chassis sitting here um, transmission down there it's got a few little oil leaks so I left it on the drip tray um, we'll step over the chassis here got the engine sitting on its on its cradle just sitting there so I can move around the shop um, I'll probably try and get that this afternoon up onto the um, engine proper engine stand so I can rotate it over and start stripping that down then we've got the the QE body sitting up here on the rotisserie um, it's on that weird angle because it just just got to clear that um, clear that motor for the panel lift door and if I lower it down it hits the bottom rail underneath so that main cross brace underneath there hits that brace um, and because it's sort of it's good sort of tapered off towards the back of the car um, kind of fits just right like that otherwise I can't flip it upside down got all the other bits and pieces um, sitting at the bottom here there's the Salisbury diff out of it it's in the back there there's my hot rod um, Mustang 2 front end there's the cross rim injected LS sitting there and I just shoved some of the other tools around the back here just out of the way um, down the back here obviously got the engine rotator stand sitting down here so I can get to it and put that engine on it and um, flip it over so what I'll do today is I'll strip this chassis down but one thing I noticed on this chassis is um, the chassis itself is perfect all the main steering stuff is perfect but I'm not sure how well you'll see this down here but um, so if you look at the top ball joint up here you'll see there's the nut on it and see how much gap between that top ball joint and the um, stub axle so that top one's not tight and the bolt won't tighten up because um, it's stripped so it was a bit risky me driving around the road like that you can actually see a bit of a score mark in the top there where it slid up and down inside the inside the pocket so it's very loose um, and check that bottom one out someone's done some pelican shit welding on that obviously um, they stripped the thread or damaged the thread so much that they couldn't actually couldn't tighten it up so what they did but they just welded the top of that um, top of that ball joint straight to the stub axle so that stub axle is fucked now so I have to buy another one so I'll strip this down I'll give you a better look at that when I get it out other than that the rest of the chassis is in good nick no bends no twists in it it came out of the car pretty straight um, it's sitting on the stands at the same height from the floors so nothing's twisted or buckled I'm gonna run a tape measure from um, from a couple of diagonals across the chassis here first once I get it all off and just sit and bear like just raw on the stand and I'll check it for square if it's all good I'll um, send it off for sand blasting or media blasting and powder coating with all the other suspension parts so stay tuned and we'll strip this baby down rest of the stub axle look really good the, the actual stub axle part is in really good nick 
Um, potential bit of burning there, like the bearing may have spun on there in the past. But you can see here where I've cut through the board joint. Um, that's never coming out. Um, maybe I can grind that weld off and save the taper, I don't know, but I'll, I think I'm better off just buying a new part for it. So it's one thing to save money, it's another thing to waste it. Um, I've got the jack underneath the spring there. I'm going to release the jack now, put it back on the stand. Um, is that got the right view of it? There we go. Um, you can see the top, top control arm. This bush is still quite good in it. Bottom one down here. But the spring. Obviously not standard springs in it. I don't know what that red. Might be um, yellow's K-Mac. Blue's Lovell. Red. I don't know. It says something up here. Um, HF8L. I'm not sure what that means, but anyway. Won't be going back here. I've got to put standard springs in the car because it's a standard rebuild. So I'll get these control arms off now and we'll keep moving on. Um, take the bottom, the nuts off the end of the control arm. It is a 15 16 socket. these ones that hold the internal bracket on get them off this is how you this is how you do the wheel alignments on these you either adjust the tie rod end in and out or on the top of the car here for those that don't know you undo these bolts and see you can see two shims in this side and smaller ones on this side so you can sort of change the angle of that top control arm or you can move the whole control arm in and out by shimming it front to back or you can adjust that tie rod end down here. Adjust this tie rod end in and out, which will turn. So you have camber and caster adjustments in those. There, it's a bit, a bit of a slow process to do, but it still works. So these are those shims I was talking about. Hopefully you can see them there. Where are they? There's the shims I was talking about there. You can see there's two in one side and one in the other. I'm not interested in keeping those. I've got a brand new set over there. What I am interested in is just putting those. I just I did these before so I could get them off easily with the impact while I was fixed to a solid structure. I'll um, press those bushes out later on on the press. Um, this whole chassis is going to go off and get media blasted, sand blasted, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to take these two bolts out of here as well. Hopefully they'll screw out the back here. Have to get an exercise socket for it. It's my 5 8 socket, hopefully. Hit them through so I'll get a soft weight hammer and um, try and knock those through because they're in the blank section of the thread there. There we go. Both out. Keep your nuts on the bolts so you don't lose them. Put them the other parts. this not with that one too. this is the bracket for the um, the bracket for the brake line to connect up to the chassis my 
I'll just leave that bolt in that hole for now. Put the bracket over there. What have we got to do here? Um, lower control arm bolts. Make sure. Huh? In the back there. Alright, get the impact on one side. Spanner on the nut in the back because you can't get the impact driver into the back of it. Sleep. We'll knock that out. Get a soft face down. Again, keep all the bolts together. Now the front one is a bit trickier because your steering arms are in the way there. So, hopefully, no, can't get the back. I have to put a knuckle on the on the socket. on it because you don't want to damage anything. Alright, that's the lower control arm out. So you can see here, you can see here where I've had to cut the ball joint off. You can see here where someone's absolutely butchered the bottom arm trying to separate that at some time and obviously they've just smashed the, the ball joint to pieces and fucked it up so that'll have to be replaced. So yeah, that's um, that's the other control arm off. And that's the left hand or passenger side steering or control 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 arms for the wheels disconnected and removed. I will take that bolt out. Don't leave it in there. All right, I'll reposition the camera. Actually, I'll just pause it. I'll take the other side off, then I'll get onto the steering. Okay, so all the control arms are stripped off now. Just got the the steering arms to do. I think taking all those control arms off probably took me best part of 20, 25 minutes I'd say. Maybe half an hour tops. So that's not a difficult job when the chassis sitting there like this. Um, right now I'll get into all these steering components that you can see down here. I'll get them removed and I'll, um, I might just dis disassemble it in one piece. I'll just take the, take the main steering arm off the steering box, which you can see down here. Disconnect that, then I'll be able to unbolt the other parts there, and they'll come off freely. So I'll um I'll start get ready for that, and then I'll start filming. Right, so I might just leave the, the whole assembly attached to the steering box at the moment. I'll just remove this mount from this side. Spin it over there. Let me just. So I'll go internal. Put the board here, so the back of the nut. Too short. Extension on it. Mm -hmm. Set that through there. Keep spinning that bolt till you get it out. Go to the next one up. This um, bolt head here has been packed to shit. Of the bolts, put them back, put them back where you got them out of. The nuts back on, keep it all in one piece if you can. Because I'll be replacing all these steering components anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'll probably just take it off from the bottom of here. That nut looks like it's been beaten up over there, so I'll take the steering box off now. Make sure it's still in the shot. Bring the camera a bit closer there for you. Right on the back over here, there's a few. You can see them down. There's three bolts down here on the right there on the side of the chassis rail, 
and they're threaded into the steering box on this side. So I'll get those off. Different size socket. Everything's imperial on this car. 5.8 is the size. And then you just hold the steering box so you don't drop it. Where's that nut done? Put the bolts back in the steering box just to keep it all together. Of course, I said, Where's the nut gone? There's no nut. There's a thread in the side of the steering box. Alright. There we have it. So, that's the steering of the car. It's a bad. It's a bare chassis now, so that whole chassis can go and get you blasted. I'll purchase all those steering components in preparation for it. Alright, so as you can see there, bare chassis. Really light once it's um once it's sitting like this. There is a lot of a lot of uh, welding spatter around this chassis so I'm a bit unsure if I'm doing back to factory on this GDS whether I um, have to grind all those dags off and clean it up just to make it look neat or whether they're supposed to stay there so um, hit me up in the comments if you know I'm um, first time I've done a car that's not um, that's not sort of a custom build with like a Pro mod sort of um, LS engine car. It's the first time I've gone back to bare, um, bare essentials and back to the factory. So, do I or do I not grind off all this stuff if I'm making it look factory? All these weld spatters and stuff around here. Hit me up in the comments. Anyway, that's it. It's fully stripped down. Um, transmission was running well. I'm just going to put a kit through the transmission. Engine's running really well. I'm just going to strip all the external parts off, heads off, inspect the bores, if the bores are fine, there's no metal in the um, in the sump, I'm going to run that whole bottom end and just replace all the externals and pretty it up a bit and make it look right. So uh, it's a really good running engine, seemed to have good compression, I compression tested it, pretty close to factory. So um, yeah, that should make this build a lot easier and a bit more cost effective. So yeah, at the moment, this is where we're up to. Um, I'll get this thing off to powder coaters this week as well as the control arms and stuff. And once um, once we've done that, we'll get it back and we'll be able to start reassembling. All right, thank you. Just one more thing. The thing I hate to say, don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe. Every subscription helps. Um, every like helps and drives more people to the channel when they see what other people are watching. Um, there's a lot of channels like mine out there Take your pick. Mine's my local workshop, just at home. It's not a big dollar business or anything. It's just me and my workshop. I don't make any money over. I just like building cars, and I'll try and document as much as I can out of this process for you, so you get a good um, good view of I mean, a good understanding of what what um, it takes to do something like this in, in your home workshop or home garage or shed or barn or whatever you want to call it. Um, till then, I'll see you on the next one.